Hello all and welcome back to another Hyper Blue Reviews Forgotten Consoles. Ladies and gentlemen, the LJN Video Art. <laughs> That's really all I need to say. But seriously, viewers of Hyper Blue know that I like to look for good qualities in bad games and movies, and in this case consoles. And I have spoken positively about an LJN game in the past, see the link in the description. But today, I'd like to take a look at LJN's attempt at their very own video game console, the infamous LJN Video Art. Is it as bad as everyone makes it out to be? Let's find out. Before I get into the console, let's dive into the history of LJN and figure out who they were and why they made the things that they did. LJN Toys Limited, as their full name goes, was an American toy company and also video game publisher that had a rough history. LJN was founded in 1970 by Jack Friedman, using funding from his employer, Norman J. Lewis Associates. LJN was created after seeing the success of other toy companies at the time. Fun fact, LJN is actually named after Norman J. Lewis, with the acronym standing for Norman's initials, but backwards. LJN focused their products on television and movie-related toys, focusing on shows such as Emergency and Thundercats, as well as the movie E.T., just to name a few. LJN also released WWE figures, well, it was WWF back in the day, but still. In fact, I'm pretty sure I had a few of these wrestling figures from back then. Fast forward a decade and a half later, Music Corporation of America Incorporated, or MCA Inc., purchased a majority share of LJN stocks in 1985. After failing to make a reasonable profit from 1986 to 1989, LJN was sold to Acclaim Entertainment. While LJN couldn't necessarily turn a profit for shareholders, they did manage to bring in major sales from video games. Like their toy line, LJN's video game line was focused on licensed products, that is, movies and television tie-ins or adaptations. These games are notorious for having little to do with the source material, aside from setting and characters. Now that's not always a bad thing in my opinion, but a lot of people are not fans of that. Regardless, in 1987, LJN saw fit to release a video game console of their own, the LJN Video Art. Watching TV, watching TV. Used to keep searching for something to see. Then my mom, she got smart. She got me video art. Sixteen colors set me free. Now the best thing on TV is me, video art. Draw my own stuff, make my own shows. It even erases, see, off it goes. Video art, now the best thing on TV is me, 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 video art. The video art console centered around drawing and was marketed as an educational console. The LJN video art provided a basic drawing program for users to enjoy. The console was packaged with a cartridge that included several images for players to color, but players could also play without the cartridge if they wanted a blank canvas. To be fair though, each cartridge also has a blank page to color on, but it's nice that the console works without a cartridge. The LJN Video Art also has several other cartridges that could be purchased for the system, with each cartridge containing several images for players to select and color. 
There was a selection of licensed titles, such as Looney Tunes, Disney, and Marvel, as well as basic things like cars, dolls, and animals. And there was also the potential for a rudimentary animation, but more on that in a bit. The LJN video art was only on the market for two years, but it apparently made a splash during the 1987 holiday season. It was priced at around $100, and was considered a hot toy that holiday season. The console even had a large advertising campaign, even featuring a rap song. And as you heard earlier, I'm using the word rap very loosely here. LJN poured a lot of money into this console apparently, but what did people actually think? Well, critics were less than impressed, and the LJN video art was critically panned. USA Today is on record with saying that the video art is a costly etch-a-sketch that is less fun and harder to use, which results in crude drawings that don't match the advertising. Newsday was less critical of the video art though, as they propped up the animation potential of the video art as its saving grace. Again, I'll discuss more on that in a bit. Entertainment News Service mentioned the sensitivity issues with the controllers. That is, and I quote, the slightest touch sends the cursor all over the screen. Roger Ebert was also very critical of the video art in his 1987 Holiday Gift Guide. He's quoted with saying that, Even if you get good at it, the results look crummy, and there's no way that any kid is going to draw a picture that looks half as good as the one on the box. So the LJN video art fizzled out and was discontinued in 1989. It was majorly discounted before it was ultimately taken off shelves. I'm not sure if LGN had considered modifying the system in any way prior to discontinuing it, but probably not given that LGN was sold to a claim around the same time it was discontinued. Well, I heard what the critics had to say, but is it really as bad as they made it out to be? Let's take a look. So the video art comes with the following the main console and controller, an RF cable, an old school switch box, an AC adapter, the activity cartridge, and the manual, and a poster. I normally wouldn't talk about the AC adapter unless it was sold separately like in the Action Max, but this one is so weird that I had to show it off. I've never seen one like this, only LJN. In any case, the video art console actually has a pretty sleek design. The infamous controller can actually fit into the groove in the console, and I don't know, I think that's just pretty neat. <laughs> there are five buttons on the console itself, and three on the controller. The leftmost button on the console toggles the erase feature on and off. The one directly next to the erase button is the page advance button. This button advances to the next drawing on the cartridge. The next series of buttons has the power button and two fill tools, although that's a bit of a misnomer. One just changes the background color, and the other is used to erase the drawing. Neither button worked for me, but I think that's a user error on my part. The controller has two buttons under the joystick for drawing straight lines. The third button is on the joystick itself. When you push the top in, the color appears on the screen where the cursor is located. Okay, that's enough about the console. Let's talk about the games and the gameplay. There were nine games released for the video art including the one package within the system. As you can see on the slideshow here, there are actually a lot of coloring pages. Let's give the controller a whirl and try to make some art. Okay, so the controller is all types of awful. I'll always prefer a mouse for these types of games, like the Super Nintendo mouse or the CDI mouse. Or just a computer mouse, I guess. The joystick is very loose and, for lack of better terms, floppy. Granted, this controller is about 30 plus years old, so some wear and tear is expected. But the manual even shows the joystick sagging to the bottom of the controller, so it may actually be the way it was designed. 
Speaking of wear and tear, the color selector snapped off after a few uses. This is unfortunately 100% due to the age of the system. Anyway, the joystick doesn't relate as well as a mouse could, and it results in sharp points, wonky lines, and scribbles. Granted, you can scribble with a mouse too, but the joystick being so loose really hurts the gameplay here. I'm not sure how anyone can create the pictures featured on the console box or the cartridge packaging, which was a big complaint from back in the day. My guess is someone made these pictures in MS Paint, or whichever paint program was available at the time on computers. Speaking of, computers did have a paint program back when this console came out, so I guess the video art was intended for those without computers? Eh, uh, who knows. Like I mentioned when discussing the controller, the way players color is by pushing a button at the top of a joystick and then moving the joystick. This is completely ridiculous, and I can't believe someone thought this was a good idea. I can't even figure out a good way to hold the controller to do this. The controller also doesn't center itself when players are done, so they'll need to move the cursor from where they left off. The cursor is very tiny on the screen, so it's very easy to lose sight of it. Also, given the looseness of the joystick, there's a tendency for the cursor to drift when players stop moving the joystick. More often than not, the cursor will more than likely fly to the other side of the screen. Now where's it going? Going back to a previous statement that I made, apparently the looseness of my controller is not supposed to be a thing. Anecdotally, many people complained about the joystick squeaking when moving it. I didn't experience that, so I guess my console was just well loved. So again, the main purpose of the LJN video art is to color, but the method in which players can color is limited to drawing with the joystick. I did mention that there are kind of pseudo fill tools on the console, but again they didn't work for me. So at the end of the day I was limited to trying to color with just the joystick. And assuming that the fill tool only changes the background color and that's it, I have to side with the people who said this in the past, there's absolutely no way anyone could make the pictures on the back of the box unless they had a lot of time to kill, and if they hated themselves. There's not really much to say about the games either. Again, the sole purpose of the LJN video art is the color inside of these digital coloring book pages, or on a blank canvas. If you're looking for a quick time waster, play Mario Paint, or open up MS Paint for that matter. LJN video art just doesn't have enough tool options or gameplay options to make it a memorable, fun experience. Now, I did promise I'd get back to the potential for animation with the LJN video art. Let's discuss. Some of the coloring pages are actually part of a story. Take this Disney storybook cartridge, for instance. There are multiple scenes where half the screen isn't filled. One may assume lazy creators in this case, but it's not just that. One thing I haven't mentioned yet is that the scribbles that players make actually move from one page to another. While this feature is annoying if you're drawing in a coloring book cartridge and the erase all button isn't working, it's actually a really good feature for the storybook cartridges. As you can see, the book starts with a main focal point, like a doll or Mickey, and then the next page will add another object. So in theory, if players had a VCR and a blank tape, then they could record their drawings from one page to the next. And of course players could do that for their pre-drawn templates that they colored, or random drawings that they made. Again though, if the players are doing a blank canvas, I guess they would have to make a quick drawing, quickly hit record on the VCR, stop the recording, erase the drawing, draw the next part, or draw add to the drawing. So I don't know, it doesn't really seem practical now, but it is a pretty neat concept for 1987. One more thing to note, there's no audio from these games or the system. Luckily, I didn't experience any white noise that sometimes comes through on these systems. Maybe if I had used the switch box, I may have heard the sweet sounds of static, but not today. So, if you're looking for a white noise machine for your baby to help it sleep, or a way to contact the dead, well, then this system might not be the right choice for you. And it would probably never actually be a good choice because there are cheaper options now. So, again, not a good choice regardless. So, the LJN video art came and went. The story, however, doesn't end in 1989. The patent for the system was transferred from LJN to Edward Gusson, the man who invented the LJN video art. Why this is important is due to what happened next.
Mario Paint was released in 1992 and saw great success. Gusson saw this and believed that Nintendo was infringing on his patent. Primarily the fact that Nintendo released a video art electronic system for drawing and coloring on a TV with predetermined pixels that comprised a variety of different cases. It was determined that Nintendo did not infringe on the patent and the case was dropped. Jeez. Well, I guess Gusson saw a way of making a little more off the LGN video art, and I guess I can't blame him too much. Actually, wait a minute, yes I could, because that's ridiculous. In any case, unlike the Action Max, which had something unique to watch or listen to with its tapes, the LGN video art is a one-trick pony that doesn't offer much. I wanted to give it the benefit of the doubt when so many players were negative about it, but it's really bad. I honestly can't defend this one. Again, there's no reason to not play a better game since you're stuck with this joystick controller. Players may even find more enjoyment by getting out a piece of paper and a pencil. <laughs> so what do you think of a console dedicated to art programs? Was it doomed from the start, or could it work with a little tweaking? Almost every console had its own paint game. Would the LJN video art be able to compete if it received some updates? Let me know what you think down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, thank you for watching. Hey y'all, a beta version demo of my game, Tales of Hyperia the Crimson Knight, is available to play over at my itch.io page. The link is down in the description. The final demo version is set to release by the end of the year, and will see massive improvements and upscaling. Make sure you stay tuned for updates.